As an athlete of any level, it is crucial that you know how you're progressing over time. Obviously, as athletes, you have goals. You have ambitions of where you want to go with the trajectory of your career. Being sure that you're heading in that direction is key. But we have to have milestones to make sure that we can get there. You're going to have personal milestones with things that you can do in-game and so on. But what do we do for the performance side? How do we track and how do we see where we're going, the trajectory that we're heading with our training? Well, we do this through assessments. So in this video, I'm going to show you exercises that we use to run assessments on our athletes. These are very simple. They take very little to no equipment to do. And these are things that you can put into play now to make sure that you are going in the right direction with your athletic career. This first assessment is the 5105. We use this to measure our speed and change the direction. So on a 5105, we'll be having two cones set up. So the setup for this is pretty simple. We go a cone in the middle and five yards one way, we put a cone, five yards the other way, we put a cone. That could be on a football field. You could start on the 10 yard line and go to the five and the 15, or you can merely just step it off or use a tape measure, right? If you use a tape measure, that's 15 feet out to each direction, all right? With the 5105, we start at our center cone. We're gonna be squatting down with one hand on the ground. It doesn't matter which hand you use, Little pro tip for you, use the hand of the direction that you're going to run in. So if you decide that you're gonna to run to the right first, put your right hand on the ground. With all of these assessments, we do have to have a way of tracking time. So you'll need a friend, a family member, whatever it might be to time you through the movement. We're gonna be starting down with one hand on the ground. Whenever we're ready, we're gonna take off sprinting all the way down to the far side, touching the ground right where the cone is. We're gonna turn, we're gonna run all the way back to this other side, 10 yards touching the ground where the cone is, and then we're running back through like the start line is our finish line. So we wanna run through the cone, we don't wanna stop and touch the line there, okay? Other names for this drill, uh, shuttle runs, a pro shuttle, things like that, that is this drill, right? So when we go, the only rules to this are we have to start with our hand on the ground, Whenever we touch going to my left to start, I have to touch with my left hand. If I'm going to my right, I have to touch with my right hand. So we can't turn and use the same hand on both sides. We have to switch hands on each turn, all right? Your goal is to get obviously as fast as possible. Give yourself a few attempts, find your best time, and then the goal is obviously to improve that time. This next assessment is a sprint. Super simple, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time demonstrating how to do a sprint, very self-explanatory. Have a set distance that you're running, get set on the line. When you go, a timer should start. When you cross the line, the timer should end. It would be better if you can have somebody timing yourself rather than, or sorry, somebody timing you rather than you timing yourself. But with the sprint, what can we do? What can we change with a sprint to make it more applicable to you? Well, that really depends on what your sport is and what your goals are through training. So if our goal through training is to improve our acceleration, we probably wouldn't time our mile and see if our mile improves because those don't really go together. We have one that's for distance and one that's for acceleration which is our first 10, 15 meters, right? So if I was wanting to test my acceleration, I probably wouldn't want to get over a 40 yard dash. If I'm wanting to test my top end speed, I might do a 10 yard fly where I'm using 10 to 20 yards to get built up in speed. And then how fast on that 30 mark or that 20 mark am I going? So I'm taking a little bit of build up and then I'm timing the end of my run essentially to see what my top speed would be at, right? So those are ways that we can manipulate that as far as the distance of your sprint, base that too on your sport. And you can go look up if your sport does a specific combine. So if you're football, the 40 yard dash, if you're basketball, the three quarter court sprint and so on. So find exactly what your sport does and apply that distance to your testing, all right? If you don't know, if you can't find what your sport does, do something like 20 meters and you'll be good to go. That is the sprint, super self-explanatory. Just make sure you're accelerating hard out and make sure you're being or using common sense when deciding the distance that you're gonna be running. This next assessment is a broad jump. This is going to measure our linear explosiveness. So how far out can we project and explode? Not necessarily how far up like a vertical test would. With this, we're using a simple tool, a tape measure. This is gonna give us our distance measurement. So we'll want to extend this as far as we might think that we jump it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Once you get it set out, you're gonna to come to the far end of it. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your feet are in line with the edge of the tape measure. You could use a line for this as well. That's probably the easiest way is to tape off a line or use a line that's already on the ground. From here, we're gonna be loading and jumping as far as we can. All right, I will demonstrate one jump. So we'll be from here 
Soft landing, all right? So we're exploding out, landing soft. What a broad jump is, how far out are we traveling? So our distance, wherever we hit, we're gonna be measuring from the back of the heel. What I would recommend for this is to have something like a broomstick or something like that, where you can see where does the back of my heel line up with. If you wanted to, you could jump right over the tape measure and land and get a rough estimate of right here, if I would have jumped this far, it would be six feet, 10 inches. So you're gonna figure out that distance that you jumped. Once you have that distance that you jumped, obviously you can test again and see if that distance improves or decreases. Again, give yourself a few attempts at this so you get your best. You don't wanna have just one messed up jump and call that your best. We're trying to get accurate numbers so that way you can have an accurate idea of how you're growing. Our next and final assessment is vertical jump. So how high do we get off the ground? So I have our vertical tester right here. Obviously, I am not expecting you to have access to a vertical tester. It's fine if you don't, but the premise of this, and I will give you the outcomes that you can use or the tools that you can use otherwise if you don't have access to this, but is to track how high we're jumping. That's the goal here. So through an explosive jump, how high am I getting up? how high is my reach and how high am I touching. So when we start this, you can either use a tester, find someone who knows how to use it and get your standing reach and then work through that in the progression of figuring out how many inches off the ground you're jumping. We're gonna be doing a standing vertical and we're gonna do an approach vertical. So an approach is movement into it, stepping and jumping. Not all combines or not all testing does both your standing and approach. I always like to do both because it tells us how we move with our body. So if our standing vertical is 25 inches and our approach is also 25 inches, then that tells us our efficiency through movement with our body might not be what it could be, right? So doing a vertical test is pretty simple. If you don't have access to one of these, which I'm assuming most of you won't have access to one. Either find a gym locally that has one that you can go use to get it tested or other outcomes could be tape measure along a wall. You're going to jump and you can put some chalk on your hand or something like that and touch on the wall as high as possible. If you touch on the wall as high as possible, it's going to give you an idea. You could also do the same and put like a piece of tape on your hand, jump up and slap the wall as high as you can, and then you're measuring how high that touch was. If you get the height of the touch, the next thing you need to do is measure your standing reach. So with flat feet, arm fully extended, how high can I reach? Once you get that measurement, you can subtract it off the total height and that's your vertical, all right? So either use a tester or use a wall, jump up, touch. You can put some, a marking on your finger and touch the wall or stick a piece of tape on the wall and then measure how high that is, subtract your standing reach away from it, and then you have what your vertical jump is. You can do that with standing and with approach, but testing your vertical is a good way to measure what power you can do and provide as an athlete. Those are the assessments that you as an athlete should be doing to make sure that you are heading in the right direction. If you just start driving on a road and you have no idea where the road goes, but you know where you want your end to be, you might not get there, right? So if you can make these tracking perimeters on the way to make sure that you're going in the right direction, then you're guaranteed to end up in the right direction of your goals, right? So make sure we're implementing these as well as others. These aren't the end all be all, these aren't the only assessments that you can do, but these are assessments that are very good for tracking the things that might come into play for you athletically, being speed, change of direction, explosiveness, and so on. So go out, try these assessments, and start tracking yourself today. One added note for you, we don't want to test these every day, every week, or really even every other week. Growing as an athlete takes time. So making sure that we're not obnoxious with our testing to the point where it discourages us is key. When I talk to athletes, I usually tell them to make it on like a two month scale. So after two months, let's t check and see how we've progressed over those months. You're not gonna see crazy improvements in a day. And if you do, it's not from the gains that you've had through your workouts, it's through the natural day-to-day -day of one day you might be more uh, predisposed to jump higher than another or run faster than another. So just know that testing needs to be spread out a little bit so that way you can see true results and true improvements over time. If you like this video, then please go ahead and hit the like button, comment below assessments that you've done or your times on some of these assessments, and then hit the subscribe button to follow us for even more fitness and athlete content. If you're an athlete looking to level up your game and take your game to the next level, this is the place for you. So hit subscribe and follow along.